Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenya. In today's video, we got a bunch of stuff going on in the kitchen. I just wanted to take you along and show you what I do with my ingredients, my produce, how I freeze it, store it, basically how I manage it so that not only do I have less food waste now than I once used to have, but also whenever I decide to make something and prepare something in the kitchen, even if it's made from veggies and fruit, I am most likely to already have those ingredients in my freezer. I can't always go shopping. I do normally make it to my local grocery store maybe about once a week but not always and that's mostly just to grab some salad and things that you cannot really freeze or store long term and when it comes to the rest of the stuff that you can store long term this is what this video is about pretty much today we'll freeze a bunch of stuff do some light cleaning in the kitchen and also I wanted to show you the new machine that I got in the kitchen it cost me quite a bit of money and I wanted to show you what it does I hope you're having a wonderful day if you're new here my name is Jenya I am a mother of four my daughter is four years old my son is two years old and my <laughs> youngest are twin boys and they're three months old so that might explain to you my shortage of time to go grocery shopping whenever I run out of something and so I do try to be prepared and possibly already have a lot of ingredients in my fridge or in my freezer now I'm starting this video with just a little bit of dishwashing I wouldn't imagine the majority of you having a baby right now but in case you do I noticed that whenever I wash my milk baby bottles in the dishwasher the dishwasher does not get through the inside of the bottle fully I do not know if it's just my dishwasher or just any dishwasher I would imagine it's pretty hard to get inside a tall bottle and so I do like to throw them into a soapy water before I throw them into the dishwasher that way I do not notice any residue on the bottles like I did before when I took them out of the dishwasher and whenever I take them out of the dishwasher I also like to rinse them with just water just in case if I have a minute I really do that step because I don't trust my dishwasher 100% I feel like sometimes there could be a little bit of dishwashing detergent left on the inside of the bottles so I try to make sure that I don't feed my babies the dishwashing detergent and I just wanted to mention that just in case you have a baby and maybe you didn't even think of that and maybe your dishwasher is perfect but maybe it is not and maybe sometimes there's a little bit of soap left inside a bottle that wouldn't be pleasant so but there's always an option to wash your bottles by hand if you have the time. I find it way easier a lot of times, especially that they're already soaked in that soapy water. Anyway, so I'm just tidying up the kitchen and unpacking and putting away some of the groceries that I got from Costco. My fridge is absolutely stuffed and I need to just organize all of the produce, so we'll get through a pretty big chunk of it today. The dishwasher is pretty dirty and we'll wipe it at the end of this video today. So at the moment I decided to just separate my grapes. I got them from Costco and I was a bit disappointed this time. A lot of them were already on the softer side. They were still perfect enough for smoothies though. So I decided to separate the soft ones from the pretty ones. And I'm going to freeze the soft ones so that I can use them for smoothies. And since I had just washed them all, they were still pretty wet. So I decided to throw them on a towel and let them air dry. Throw the soft ones in the freezer and then put the other ones into the fridge so that they can be eaten. I got some bread from Costco and since we still were using our loaf of bread, I just went ahead and threw these two into the freezer. And my freezer definitely needs to be defrosted. We have not done that in a while. We had been working on emptying the freezer because it was full of meats and we did that successfully. However, now I just never seem to find a good chunk of time to take care of this freezer. Just empty it all and defrost it and clean it up. And I'm sure I'll find some time in the near future. At least I'm hoping so. We just bought a new fridge from Scratch and Dent store and we got it with a great discount. And we're still keeping up 
our old fridge which we just put into the garage that means I have some extra freezing space and that's just wonderful that is all I was dreaming about because I do love freezing everything I do care about nutrition and this is why I choose freezing because next to fresh produce this is the next best option to save the nutrients I believe at least from what I read then other options of a long-term storing your produce such as canning or drying produce What a lovely carrot in the shape of heart. I definitely decided to wipe this crisp drawer. It's always better to immediately take your produce out of the plastic bags. And when it comes to veggies, it would always help to put a paper towel on the bottom of the crisp drawer. That way that paper towel will absorb all the moisture coming out of the veggies and the veggies would not go quite as bad. As opposed to if you leave them in that plastic bag where the moisture has nowhere really to go but stay in that plastic bag and the veggies will just go bad pretty fast. I never bought these carrots before and I wasn't sure how I wanted to store them. I definitely was not going to leave them in that plastic bag for long but I didn't get to take them out of that bag in this video though. And of course because our fridge is full of fruit and all the other stuff I didn't I wasn't really washing all of the fruits and veggies like you ideally would just wash them and cut them all I was just taking care of my priorities for the day one of them was the celery it was going pretty bad and soft because I left it in the fridge for a little bit I completely forgot about it but let's fix the situation it's just all dried up because it needs some water so we're going to wash it cut it up and then put it into a mason jar filled with water and back into the fridge the next day it should all be nice and looking like new so we'll check on it the next day and see what it's looking like. Because I use mason jars so much, I bought myself the plastic tops for them, the metal ones that mason jars normally come with get pretty rusted over time and so for somebody like me, I definitely needed those little tops which I love. The rest of the celery that did not fit into the jar I would like to cut up and put it into a plastic bag and throw it into the freezer for the next time that I need it. I do the same thing with carrots as well. Some of them I chop and some of them are grated and put into the freezer for the next time that I need it for a soup or whatever else. It's definitely not ideal to use sandwich bags for freezing but I'll talk about it a little bit later. You know these cucumbers that you buy from either Walmart or Kroger that are, I don't really like the taste of them. Basically, I found the best way to eat them is to cut off that skin and then chop them up and use them in salads. I do that because a regular nice cucumbers are really expensive and with the way that we eat veggies, especially me, I eat a lot of them, I am not going to spend that much on cucumbers every time and so this way I found that it works and it gives your salads a really nice crunchiness and my kids eat it as well whenever I put a little bit of lemon juice oil and salt on them. I get this ham pretty often at Costco at a very reasonable price. The only problem is it went bad in our fridge a couple of times whenever I did not slice it up. So this time what I'm going to do is that I'm going to slice up some of it so that it will get eaten pretty fast. And then the other chunks of it, I have done it before and it worked just fine. I'm going to just cut the rest into a couple of chunks and throw them into the freezer just because this is such a big piece of meat. And my husband will probably get tired of eating it all in a short period 
that time. And like I mentioned, I did do it once before. I just threw a chunk of it into the freezer and then when I unfroze it, it was just perfect and it got eaten. You might notice that sometimes I write what it is on the plastic bag whenever I throw something into the freezer. Sometimes I do not. If it is something that I know we will eat within a couple of weeks or a month, I don't always bother to write the date on the plastic bag, especially that I reuse the thicker plastic bags whenever I freeze something like veggies in them. I do not reuse plastic bags if I froze meat in those bags. But if bags have some veggies and are pretty clean, I think it is silly to just throw it into the trash. So I'll wash them and reuse them once again. You're left without warning And now you're ignoring me So what about us? What about all we had? Just send me an SOS I'll run to you faster than a lightning Give me some time to breathe Give me some time to speak Cause I know the truth inside And I promise you this time no My fridges are not exactly organized the best way right now, so please don't judge that part. I can't wait to get to all of that and just get it organized, cleaned up, and defrosted. Just like I mentioned, that last chunk I'm going to slice up for my husband, put it into the container, into the fridge. And that goes for anything that you want to have eaten in your fridge. Obviously, just slice it up, put it into a container and make it accessible and easy to grab. The last thing you want to do when you're hungry is to start cooking something or figure out what you want. So you normally end up just grabbing a snack. That's why I pre-cut my cucumbers and sometimes tomatoes and onions to make a salad really fast. Sometimes I pre-make salads in mason jars that way it becomes my snack whenever I'm hungry I will grab that first while I'm figuring out what I want to eat next I have been practicing meal planning more and more but that is a topic for another day Time to organize a bunch of meat that I got from Costco this time. We really run out of all the chicken. This is my go-to whenever I cook just about anything. These blue ones are chicken thighs with skin on and bone in. I like using them for soups or a chicken bake. So there isn't much prep involved just to cut them up, separate them and freeze them. Next ones are boneless chicken thighs with skin off. With these ones, I like to take them out of the bag, cut them up into cubes because that way I don't have to worry about it or when I'm in a rush cooking. I normally pre-plan how I'm going to use them and so I'm going to leave about a couple of them untouched and put them into the freezer just as is and the rest I'm going to cut into cubes and freeze them in cubes. I do not wash this kind of chicken at any point because I believe that only makes the bacteria grow and is risky. I do sometimes use green sandwich bags for freezing my anything and that's normally not what is recommended because that is not a freezer bag and so the only times I really use it is when I know that we're going to use those foods within the next few days, maybe a week or so, but either way it does not prevent food from freezer burn, so I do not stand behind it, I do not recommend it and please don't look at it as an example, however I just do it myself.
I think I got distracted and just started loading the dishwasher because I knew that the babies would wake up soon. I definitely needed a bunch of bottles for later so I needed to start the dishwasher before my hands get busy with the twins. So right after I quickly load the dishwasher I should be getting back to freezing that meat. Like I promised, we will wipe that dishwasher because it is pretty dirty. But at the same time, my twins started waking up, so I needed to quickly just throw that meat into the fridge at least until I get back to it a little bit later. Working with raw meat is not my favorite thing on the menu and I definitely do make sure that my hands are always clean. You've got to do that when you work with raw meat especially. The meat in that metal bowl was going to be for dinner so I'm just going to stick everything into the fridge but this is a couple of hours later. I just spread out the meat in those Ziploc bags. I'm placing some parchment paper between those Ziploc bags so that they don't get frozen to each other and so I'm going to throw this into my fridge in the kitchen because like I said I'm going to be using those meats very soon. Something that I'm doing for the second time in my life, but I've heard about it a few times and I was just curious. This is purely an experiment more than practice quite yet. We're going to freeze raw eggs. I'm using four eggs, I'm mixing them up and then I'm going to use a muffin tray to put them into the freezer, but I made a mistake right here. I should have used muffin liners. Please do so if you decide to freeze eggs like this. I don't know why I didn't use muffin liners. The article I read as to how to do this freezing of the eggs did not instruct you to actually use muffin liners. I guess it was supposed to be self-explanatory, but anyways, whenever I do something for the first time, whether it be following the recipe or whatever, I always follow all the instructions 100%. And the second time you can do your own twists if you wish. Anyways, I'm going to add a little bit of about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt into each egg. Mix it up a little and put it into the freezer. You can also add sugar instead of salt if you're going to be baking with those eggs. But either way, you can use salt because you bake with salt as well, right? So it is time to take the celery out of the fridge and see if it's hardened up. And as you can see, it is not soft anymore. It is nice and crunchy. And I do the same thing with carrots as well, whenever I need to. Just to hurt me, I love just went cold. But I'm still burning, I love just went cold. Why? I keep on making the same mistake. I'm going to grab one of the sandwich meats and just throw it into the freezer just like that because it's still unopened and we have one more which we are planning on using first and this one is for the future. Now 
we are also going to do something that I do all the time. You know, like you open a big can of tomato paste and then it goes bad in your fridge and then you open it up and it's all moldy. That happened to me quite a few times. I hated wasting a whole can of tomato paste. And so now I freeze it by little portions by about a tablespoon because that is what a recipe normally asks you for. This is so convenient that I do not ever have a can of tomato paste in my fridge anymore. It is always frozen and it's in the zip Block bag in the freezer whenever I need it. If I'm cooking with it, I throw it a lot of times just frozen as is, and sometimes if I need to fry the tomato paste for extra flavor, I'll just pull it out of the freezer before I start cooking and it will unfreeze within a few minutes, like maybe, I don't know, 15 to half an hour. We threw those into the freezer and now I'm going to wipe that dishwasher. <laughs> I like this method plant-based, stainless steel, cleaner and polish. I'm going to try and stay away from chemicals, especially in the kitchen as much as I can. But I am not planning to go completely chemical free quite yet. I feel like sometimes if a bathroom is particularly dirty, you cannot undo without a chemical. Every once in a while, I don't know where that takes me, but I'm planning to use way less chemicals than I once did. At first, I used the green, slightly wet microfiber cloth with the method spray. Then I turned it to the dry side and wiped the dishwasher. And then I followed up with the pink, completely dry and clean microfiber cloth to wipe down the dishwasher. Provided that the cleaner is completely plant-based, I am quite satisfied with the results. Even though there might be a couple of imperfections, I am still happy because this is good enough for me. I'm gonna get the bags ready for the raw eggs and the tomato paste when they're done freezing. And please do not forget, I still wanted to show you that machine which you see on the countertop. That would be a juicer. I always wondered how it worked. I always wanted to get one, but I was not sure if it's worth the money. I guess it depends on your lifestyle, but I always hear people drinking celery juice. I was always wondering if I was going to do that. I don't know, but it just sounded like a good idea to get a juicer and it seemed like a good time to get one. And so I got it on Black Friday sale with a great discount and it's a good quality one. So we are going to unbox it and make a couple of drinks following the directions on the book that it came with. One of my pepper plants got broken into many stems and it's a long story. I did try my best to save it, but it was dying. So unfortunately gotta say goodbye to that pepper plant. I was pretty excited to try it for the first time so we are going to make orange juice first and then we're going to try the carrot and apple. The recipe asked for five oranges and you still have to cut them in little pieces and cut all of the skin off. I don't know why but in my head I would imagine that you would just throw a whole orange with the skin on into that machine and, and somehow the machine would be smart enough to separate everything that's needed. But no, you would still have to cut everything into small pieces and I am not a fan of machines that are too tedious to use and too complicated to clean so we're just giving it a try seeing if my kids will like it because it was not turning out to be quite what I was expecting it to be Now I'm just making apple juice and then I'm going to do the carrots separately from apples. I gotta tell you, I tried the orange juice, it was delicious. I tried the apple juice, it was out of this world. I loved this apple juice, but it was so little of it. But what can you expect? It's only three apples. And you always will feel like the juice is not quite enough comparing to how much fruit you put into the juicer. So when it came to carrot juice, it was all right. I mean, what else would you expect from carrots? But when it came to celery juice, 
I did not like that one. I am not going to drink that one in the future. So the juicer machine is actually perfect, but I'm still deciding if I actually need it in my life right now. Anyways, it has been about an hour, and our tomato paste is now frozen, or frozen enough for us to take it off the parchment paper, put it into a Ziploc bag, and throw it into the freezer, and that way it's ready whenever I need it. Our eggs are also frozen and this is where I made a mistake, like I said, I should have used muffin liners. So here I am trying to take them out of the muffin tray unsuccessfully, so I decided to just turn it over and pour some hot water on them until one of the eggs falls out and then put them into a Ziploc bag that way. So the experiment all in all I think went successfully because whenever I need a raw egg I have one available in my freezer. That's because sometimes when I buy eggs they just don't get used all that much and they take up space in our fridge. We don't really eat eggs all that much throughout the day but anyways guys I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found at least a one thing that's helpful and useful to you feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section and i'll see you next week and have a good weekend all right bye bye now